This is Crimin Mercenary Tales, a lighthearted arcade slasher adventure game from the developer that made the Wizard series and Warhammer Age of Sigmar Tempest Fall. This swashbuckling pirate game made exclusively for VR comes to the Quest 2 and Pico headset shortly, and we have the complete review for it to see if it's worth spending your hard-earned treasure on. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Chris from the VR Grid and welcome to the channel. If you like this video, give it a like and if you're interested in more VR content from us, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss new videos as they drop. And if you're looking to join our VR conversations, feel free to leave a comment or even better, join us each and every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific here for the Virtual Boys podcast. Now, coming into Crimin, I can't say I had the highest expectations for while I really enjoyed both the Wizard titles on other platforms, I did find the graphical downgrade on the Quest versions very disheartening. Further adding to my lower expectations was my playthrough of Warhammer Age of Sigmar, which on either platform left me bored and severely underwhelmed. Enter Crimin Mercenary Tales, the next title from Carbon Studios, a game that looks to borrow heavily from the previously mentioned games, but with a decidedly lighter tone. Things kick off after a brief tutorial and you're left to your own devices in the village pub. Here you'll meet a variety of cookie cutter mercenary types, each with a story to tell. Now these characters, I think, are supposed to be humorous, but they really aren't, and instead just come off as pretty generic and cookie cutter characters. A quick high five and you are thrown into each Merc's story and get to live the tale being told. Each of these mini adventures lasts about 30 to 45 minutes and take place in a variety of 17th century locations, ranging from castles and ancient temples to village streets and forgotten shipwrecks. Now, the gameplay across all eight of these mini adventures is much the same, short of a few unique ideas thrown in here and there to mix things up. As such, the bulk of the gameplay here revolves around the game's melee combat system, which if you've played Carbon Studios' Warhammer title, you will find very similar. And similar to Warhammer, enemies will approach one at a time or in numbers, but always towards you. Enemies are armed with a single-handed sword, same as you, and often approach with their guard up to block an outright attack. The idea here is that you must stand your ground, anticipate their attack based on their move set and stance, and block accordingly, either with a vertical or horizontal parry. This opens them up to attack, freeing you up to flail away. Now initially, I kind of enjoyed this system, just as I did in Warhammer, as it does require a bit of strategy to anticipate and time your parries. This becomes especially true when the game begins to throw enemies at you in numbers, as these minions don't wait their turn patiently like the old Assassin's Creed games, and instead will attack you within very short intervals, and sometimes all at once. Unfortunately, the system is filled with flaws and exploits, most notable of which is that your enemies are complete morons, and simply go through their attack and guarding animations essentially oblivious to what you're doing or their minion buddies are up to. As such, enemies can often feel like they're simply coming at you in waves, resulting in some real waggle fests. Add to this the fact that you can sweep attack their lower body, which is always unguarded, and dispatching foes can at times feel like make work. Enemy variety throughout a single mission and continuing throughout the different missions does attempt to keep combat feeling fresh, with different enemies having different attack animations. But unfortunately, with the exception of a few heavy and some ranged enemy types, almost every enemy type requires you to pretty much go through the whole guard parry counterattack moveset. Mixing up the combat slightly is the inclusion of almost a power-up system, as enemies will drop weapons upon death. These weapons can include a bigger single-handed melee weapon or something ranged like a pistol or bow and arrow, but their use is limited and often spent after only a few uses, once again leaving you with only your single sword. Now listen, I'm not saying the combat here completely sucks, but it does often feel like a super arcadey slasher beat-em-up arcade game from the 90s. As such, it does make for some sometimes bloody, often brainless fun, and when it clicks it can actually be a lot of fun, but I found it wore thin quickly with me. Thankfully, these shorter missions don't often overstay their welcome, and combat is broken up by a slew of climbing sections and the odd mini-boss or puzzle section. Climbing here was surprisingly meh for me, and I actually found it to have a bit of jank to it, that sometimes made climbing a bit of a pain. And this is surprising because Carbon Studios have had climbing sections just like these in every one of their games, all of which felt better than they do here. As for the puzzles, they aren't brain busters and shouldn't stump you for too long, often feeling like they were made for a younger audience to grasp. Now when taken as a whole, Crim and Mercenary Tales plays just okay. It wants to be a fun, thrilling adventure, but it all too often just feels like it's going through the VR gameplay basics we've done countless times before, and lacks any upgrade system, weapon variety, or really any depth to make it very interesting or add any replay value. 
Helping things out slightly, though, are the visuals, as Carbon Studios has wisely chosen to go with a more comic book style of art, which is consequently more quest-friendly as well. Previous Carbon Studio games were always designed for PC first and then scaled down to run on the quest, and the results were games that came off as mere lifeless shadows of their former glory. And while I'm not thrilled to see Crimin only on mobile headsets, the graphical style certainly makes sense here, and being developed for a mobile headset first has ensured much of the perceived lighting in the game is baked in. Level variety is a huge plus for Crimin here, taking place over eight very different environments, each with their own visual style, enemy sets, and a nice use of verticality in their layout. These colorful comic book style levels pop in the headset, despite not being overly detailed, and deliver some decent draw distance with little popping. Some detail drop-off can be seen on the ground only about 20 feet out, but this is becoming commonplace for a quest game pulling off larger environments like this. All in all, I was pretty impressed with Crimin visually as it knows it's a quest game and has been designed to work well within those confines. As for the sound side of things, the music, sound effects, and voice work all come together to reinforce the comic book stylings that the visuals went for. The Slavic folk-inspired musical score perfectly suits the game's lighthearted adventure stylings, and the voice work, while not as humorous as I think was intended, is fine for setting the tone of the game's eight mini-stories. The rest of the sound mix is pretty much what you would expect from a comic book adventure. Think Saturday morning cartoons, and I think you'll have it. Come here, you thieving bastard. I'll give you a good hide. Ah! Oh my, you're a big one. What do they feed you? How hard is it to stop one man? It seems that Carol is quite capable of anything. What? What do you mean by that? Oh, don't worry about it, love. Sorry for that. And that brings me to my final thoughts and review score. Crimin Mercenary Tales is an okay game. That obviously isn't a very favorable statement for a game, but that's honestly how I felt coming away from the game. Its core gameplay, that of an arcade slasher beat-em-up, is fun in small doses, but it does wear thin quickly. And the game's other gameplay mechanics often feel more like filler than anything very meaningful, and simply serve to break up the monotony of combat. Visually and audio-wise, this is a comic book-inspired adventure through and through, and Crimin is competent in these areas, but also, frankly, pretty generic and paint-by-numbers, and the game does struggle to find its own identity. As such, the VR Grid gives Crimin Mercenary Tales a 6.5 out of 10. There's definitely some fun to be had here, guys, but it's short-lived. Those looking for something light and simple may get more out of this, as might kids, but those looking for a deep gaming experience, look elsewhere. Anyways, guys, that's it from us. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you aren't already. And as always, I am Chris from the VR Grid, and I will catch you on my next video.